Guys, what's up? It's your boy Green Wing Man. I'm here to talk about my thoughts of week one in NFL for our Philadelphia Eagles. So, if you're a big Philadelphia Eagles fan, our team won uh, by uh, 30 to 17 against the Washington Redskins. I thought this was a very good game. I didn't really think there was a moment where our team was going to actually come and lose this, even though there were moments where there were a lot of, a little bit of a momentum sh uh, shift coming from the Washington Redskins. I personally did not think we were going to sit down and lose this game. Now, um, let's talk about, uh, there's a couple key things I think I want to talk about. Carson Wentz played very well. He's basically our weapon in this game. He is the best player on our squad, no doubt. Um, the incredible play where the pocket started to break down and Carson would start to scramble to his left hand side while keeping his eyes down the field to link up with Nelson Aguilar for that 54 yard uh, touchdown. I thought was incredible. It's those kind of plays that are very Aaron Rodgers-esque and Ben Roethlisberger where he has that kind of build where nobody can really sit down and, and take him down. I think if, I, I think I, I, I think this is the reason why Howie Roseman drafted number two to get this kind of kid because he has those special tangibles that a lot of quarterbacks don't have. I think he definitely has that it factor to probably a potential uh, five five top quarterback for the in, in the league for years to come. I personally think that. I think when you see those kind of plays, you can't argue to not think that he has that capability to be one of the better quarterbacks in this league. Um, so yeah, so a fantastic play from him. Got two touchdowns, another play to Legaria Blum. Um, that also came, uh, came for a touchdown, which I thought was pretty good. Um, yeah, Nelson Aguilar showed up in the game, was very, very mobile, made a lot of catches. I know that was the biggest concern for everybody going to going into this game, but it sounds like he looks like he's very comfortable right now. At the moment, at the moment, he looks very comfortable. Yes, he did have a couple of drop balls though, but at the moment, he looked very comfortable at the moment. I thought that was really, really good. Um, let's talk about the defense. Uh, the defense uh, was really, really good. Jim Schwartz did a phenomenal job of creating these different kind of blitz packages uh, against uh, Kirk Cousins and the Washington Redskins. He really did a good job keeping them off balance throughout the entire game. I think Kirk Cousins could never really figure out what was coming at him in multiple uh, in multiple sides. Uh, Jim Schwartz brought in an extra man one and two uh, to really put pressure on him to make you know, can, to make mistakes very early where he fumbled the pass and uh, also led to also even a pick in the end zone from Jalen Mills later in the game. I thought he, Jim Schwartz, can't get any much of the credit. He did a phenomenal job uh, playing a very good defense in the game. Also leading to the controversial um, call which Fletcher Cox uh, getting in the fumble and also running in for a touchdown to basically seal the game. Now, personally, uh, was it an incomplete pass? Um, I, I'm going to say yes. I think when his hand, his throwing motion was coming, the ball was coming loose out of his hand. If that is correct, though. But, you know, I think when you have a couple of refs look at it when you have a 50 50 split i think it normally just goes to the rule in standing and i just kind of figured a way because it seemed like even the announcers and even the people in the box up in new york really didn't know exactly i think it went 50 50 either way and i think the refs saw it that way too um uh another problem uh, i think to report to you uh, ronald darby got hurt in the first half um it looked really bad when uh on, on that bad ankle sprain but apparently there was no ligament tears there was nothing wrong with it and apparently we were supposed to hopefully get ronald on the back in four to six weeks four would be the best six is probably going to be the maximum time but it's clear that he will be back to play for this 27th season uh, another injury that I'm going to sit down and report to is also Jason Peters. I think that's one of the, I think that uh, along with a lack of corner back help we have on the squad, offensive line 
is also a little bit of a concern too in this game. Granted, um, they actually did well in the game. It might not seem like it, but they actually did pretty well. But, you know, to... I know I understand that Jason Peters is getting old and you know eventually he's going to go into the Hall, Pro, Hall of Fame, Pro Bowler, all that though. But if we're going to have these kind of nagging injuries with, uh, with Jason Peters going back and forth that he can't sit in and play, I think that could be a big issue and I don't know if, what they're going to do. I don't know. Are they going to leave Vitae in there? Um, I'm not going to say his, his full name. I think he will, will play, but I'm just going to say Vitae. All right, yeah, uh, Vitae and, uh, and Lane Johnson. Are they going to sit down with Lane Johnson immediately to the right, on, onto the right side and start getting him prepped? Um, I don't know. It's a lot of interesting questions that need to be answered uh, during this week and hopefully answered very soon before we head up to play the Kansas City Chiefs. Um, but other than that, it, I, dude, a fantastic game for a lot of people. Another big issue that I have to is the running game. I think the running game is is still going to be a bit of concern. Um, I, I do believe that Doug Peterson needs to do a better job of keeping LeGarrette Blunt in the game and still trust in the running game. You need to get your running backs into a rhythm. Um, I, again, one of the big issues why I'm not such a big component about running in committee is that you're constantly pulling the runner, running backs in and out for different situations. And I think you just need to keep one running back in and you got to continue to feed him. You got to continue to feed him so he can get into a rhythm and then maybe he'll get that three yards and then he'll get five yards and then as the game goes on and the, and the opposing defense gets tired maybe the running back will be able to bust out and give you 11 12 yard carry um but we don't see that because again once again doug peterson is not consistent enough with that running game and with that balance um but other than that it was a great call to game um, there were a little bit of bad calls, or a little bit of bad calls on Doug Peterson. I'm not gonna rip him too much. Um, well, the lateral, the lateral pass. I don't know what what he was thinking about doing that though. But other than that, it was a really well called game. I didn't think we were gonna lose this game by not by the stretch. I thought the Eagles kind of had this wrapped up, and it was just. I think the Eagles even had it wrapped up, even though we gave the ball back to Kirk Cousins. There's maybe what two minutes left in the game. I thought the defense was playing good enough good enough to kind of calm him down and maybe even pick him off one more time um, before it was all said and done. Um, and I did that with Fletcher Cox. Fletcher Cox is a beast in doing that. But, yep, that's my thoughts on that game. The Redskins as we sit down and we head into Kansas, uh, we head into the Kansas City Chiefs. Um, at, in my mind, I think we're going to lose that game, unfortunately. Um, in the beginning, it was wrong because just the fact that we just don't have Ronald Darby, our best corner back on the field. I think it's going to make, I think it's going to change the game plan a little bit because I know that uh, the Kansas City Chiefs have some pretty good wide receivers on that front. Um, so, yeah, um, I, originally I think I had, I definitely think in, with Darby, I thought we had a 50-50 chance without him. I just don't see us um, really be beating Kansas City in their house, the Arrowhead, which is probably one of the loudest places to play in the NFL, along with playing in the Seahawks place. And that's my thoughts of week one of the NFL for the Philadelphia Eagles. Tell me what you thought. What did you thought about the game, man? Were you excited? Were there things that concerned you? Let me know in the comments below. Also check out my Facebook and check out my Twitter page. And I will have Instagram actually coming very, very soon. Until then, I am your Green, green Man. Wonderful people of Philadelphia. 